Hey everyone, welcome back to Urban Rush. We are now gonna introduce you to someone who will probably change your perspective on what you consider having a bad day. Understatement, to say the least. This is an amazing book. Uh, it's called The Test of Will, and if you ever think you've had a test of will, I don't think you have yet in your life. Warren McDonald. Oh, no, you haven't. No, you haven't, is here to tell his amazing story of survival. Hello, Warren, how are you? How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Thanks for good. coming Bye today. Today. Thanks for having me on. Now, you did an amazing job of capturing uh, what I, I feel ashamed to call it a struggle because I can't even imagine what you went through on uh, just what was supposed to be uh, an, a normal hiking trip for yourself. Yeah. Maybe you can briefly tell us uh, what exactly happened when a one-ton rock fell on top of you. Yeah, it landed in my lap. I call it a saga because uh, <laughs> there, there was a lot happened, you know, and it was one of those things. I, I, I often say that the story literally fell into my lap and I was in the... <laughs> I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, yeah. and uh, I was on a hike that uh, was supposed to take a couple of days, and uh, I had the misfortune to pull a, a piece of rock out of the out of the wall, out of the wall that I was on, and it landed in my lap and slammed me down into a, a creek bed. And now you you, you know, were uh, fortunately enough uh, hiking with uh, another person, yeah. and you had just met this guy the day before. Uh, the day before, and, wow. and the interesting thing, and you captured a little bit in the book, and I've I've read a couple of interviews is what this guy had to go through as well. Because, yeah. I mean, you're in an incredibly frightening position, but this guy's in the same sort of situation. Tell us a little bit yeah. about him. And well, the pressure was on him. It was uh, a Dutch guy, Geert Van Coolen, and mm -hmm. uh, we had only met the day before. And when he left, I mean, that was one of the hardest parts for me. When he left, I, I almost begged him to take it easy. You know, now, like, when he left you, we have to explain to people, he left you with the one-ton rock on top of you. Yeah, the riverbed, uh, right the levels were rising. So not only yeah. were you trapped, obviously you lost both of your legs, and you were trapped, the water was rising, and you could have drowned at the same time. And yeah. maybe you can explain how far he had to hike out uh, in order to get help to get you get you rescued. Yeah. Well, the, the thing was, we were on an island, mm -hmm. on a remote island. We had bashed our way through the bush and up a creek bed for eight hours to get to where we were. So I knew that it was, you know, it was going to take him all day to get back down. And, yeah. and we'd hiked up a dry creek bed, and you know, half an hour after this happened, it it's started raining. pouring rain. Yeah. And we all know what happens when it rains, yeah. creeks come up. Mm -hmm. So one minute I'm sitting on my backside's barely touching the water, and a few hours later I got a raging, flooding creek up and around it was cold. my waist. And it was cold, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, well, and, and, and obviously uh, you survived. Uh, which yeah. is amazing enough, but this part that just blows me away is what you've done since. Uh, explain that, because they took you out of there. First of all, you saw your rescue on television, uh, yeah. I guess about a year later, because the camera crews and everything were there. Uh, but then you go on and you have to face a double amputation. Yeah. Explain what that was like for you. I mean, can you explain it? Uh, <laughs> in a couple of words, no. That's why I wrote yeah. the book. But, it, but basically, you know, I, I woke up in hospital, yeah, you know, with both legs gone, and I was a pretty active guy. And, and you know, yeah, for the first few weeks, I didn't even know if I was going to um, be around yeah. for much mm -hmm. longer. But, you know, uh, over time, I thought, well, let's just see, let's see what a guy with no legs can do. And it just sort of went from there. One minute, you know, you're doing pull-ups on, yeah. uh, on the bar above your bed and learning how to use a wheelchair. And at some point, I just had this crazy idea I, I might be able to get out. I was going to ask again. whether it was a natural progression, yeah. because it seems yeah, to me like it at goes some in, point. It goes in steps, yeah. Because yeah. I always assumed that at some point, you just have to go, OK, no, this is it. You know, i got to live my life the way I'm going to live it. And you yeah. have to make that conscious decision. Yeah. But it seems like with you and the way you describe it in the book, like it really was baby steps to yeah. that recognition that you can still live the active life that you want to. Yeah. And, it, and that's the key, is breaking it down into those steps. Like nobody, yeah, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, yeah, I woke up in hospital and thought, ah, big deal, I've lost both legs. I'm in going four, up Kilimanjaro. In four years, I'll climb Kilimanjaro. <laughs> Which you did, we should probably mention. But it's, it's, it happens in steps, yeah. and that's what I try and get across to people, like with the presentations I do, you yeah. know. Yeah, sure, aim high, but... But you gotta, you know, Start break it down into goal, steps. But you have what to was it like for you yeah. the first time uh, that you decided to go hiking again and actually scale something? Because I can't imagine that would have been an easy hurdle at all in no. your baby's And steps. that was ten months after that you was had had your amputations. After, yeah. yeah, and it was, it was, it was. Uh, I suppose the best way to put it, I was probably about sixty or seventy percent sure that it was going to work. You know? and it's, it's, another, it's not a real high percentage <laughs> yeah, when you're climbing but, something. But, but the point is, if I had waited until I was 100% certain, Might we wouldn't it. be sitting here now talking about it. Because right. I would have never taken the initiative and gone for it. But it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty hard. You know? There was one point, like I was sort of scrambling over rocks, and at one point I had to climb up through a hole 
yay big underneath a huge slab and you know, I looked at it and I thought do I really want to go through that hole you know yeah. can this happen and yeah. I decided that that can't happen. Well, and, and you always have to, and, and this I don't think happens much in anybody's life, but especially for you, I mean, you're really paving your own way. It's not like there's a book out there that ex explains I how to do this. I wish there was. You know, no. if you've lost, lost both Here legs, this is how you approach <laughs> this. And I mean, yeah. you've got equipment and stuff yeah. that you use, but it must have been a really yeah. interesting process trying to always sort out how you tackle that next challenge. Yeah, and that's a huge part of mm -hmm. what the last few years has been about. It's like, okay, this is what I want to do. How do we, how do we go about it? You know, and I'm lucky I've got just good people to, I'm, I'm, uh, I work with the best prosthetic company yeah. you know, in yeah. the world, really, down yeah. in the States. Now, we're, we're looking at some of your equipment here, we're seeing some clips of you climbing. I'm sure yeah. you had to say, well, this is what I need to do. Maybe you can tell us about some of the special prosthetics that you've uh, yeah. brought with you today. I mean, basically, these things have just opened up so many doors for me and what I do. You know, I mean, you know, if you're trying to figure it out, I mean, that goes on on me yeah. as such, you know, I've got a long pair with knees and feet that I use and I can, you know, stagger around at 5'10 or whatever. But we figured for climbing, let's keep leave all that out, yeah. keep them low to the ground. And then I, I basically... I've got oh, there it is. There it is. But and all that's the little bits eyes. and pieces and, you know, these things are great for travelling through airports and stuff. <laughs> But, uh, you know, so these unscrew. Yeah, make sure you hide them. <laughs> Customs <laughs> loves that yeah, kind of stuff. That? Oh, don't worry about that. That's just my ice climbing foot. But, you know, we, we, we figured it out that uh, I first met uh, my, my partner, Margo, and she's a, a keen ice climber and saw a film of mine and said, I reckon you could climb ice. And I thought, oh, maybe well, I could. Well, you know, I guess thing, you know, we had these. And ice climbing is one of the most technically challenging uh, forms of climbing. Uh, as well, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's one of the biggest challenges that most climbers tackle. In some ways, though, for me, I it, I wouldn't say it's easier, but just the dynamics of it and the way I move and just having feet that actually stick into the ice as opposed to, you know, right. sort of sketching around, it it really works. You know, it really <laughs> Way to works. turn it into an advantage. <laughs> well, some I people would... have tried to tell me that, oh, it must be easier for you climbing without legs, and it's like, whoa. Uh, yeah, I was, I don't have, a, so. have a one-ton <laughs> rock sit in your lap for a couple of days and see whether it, uh, mm. it yeah, seems easier. Yeah, no either. more complaining about climbing the stairs. Well, thank um, you, man. I don't know what else to say, but uh, Pick up book the book is probably the best way to incredible. put it. A test yeah. of will, you can pick it up. And if you want to hear uh, Warren speak, he's going to be doing that because Word on the Street is coming up. If you want to check him out, we've got the information for you right there, Sunday, September 26th at 1.30 on Hamilton Street, of course, right by the library, and uh, on Tuesday, October the 5th, as well at Fireside Books. Warren, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so no, much. Thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for, for sharing your story time. with us. It's amazing. We are going to throw it over to Marlene Gervich and Rick.